What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Outdoors with Creed Gun Talk. Uh, the last video I did, I talked about my plate carrier, how I have it set up, and what I'm running with. Uh, I mentioned my AR-15, and that's why I had the mags on there. Before we go any further, if you like these videos, hit that like button, share these videos, leave me some comments, please click that subscribe button, hit the bell so you get notified every time I do a video. I also talk about fishing and I'm working my way into hunting. Um, it's September, so here in Arkansas we're getting ready to start uh, archery season and I'm really looking forward to doing that. So if y'all want to see more of these videos and you want to see my hunting videos, leave me a comment down there in the comment section and I'll make sure to pump out whatever I can to make y'all happy. Without further ado, let's get into this. So, as I said, today we are talking about my AR-15 and how I have it set up. First of all, this is an Olympics arm, uh, Olympic arms. It is chambered in 5.56. So. Um, I chose this weapon mainly because uh, that's what most law enforcement are issued is for their duty rifles is the AR-15s. Um, this one, I've, I've had this one for, oh goodness, many years, many years. I actually bought this one as kind of a birthday gift to myself. But, uh, like I said, it's uh, chambered in 5.56. Right now, I have a 20-round uh, PMAG magazine in it. I do have the 30 rounds, as you saw, on my plate carrier. But I will go ahead and remove that. I will also demonstrate that this gun is safe and clear. No ammo in the gun whatsoever. But uh, I'm going to just go over a few things. First of all, like I said, 556 five, Olympic Arms. Uh, I didn't really do too much fancy stuff. Uh, the sights on the back, I have a Magpul flip-up sight. On the front, I have a UTG flip-up sight. I did have the Magpul uh, flip-up sights up front, but the reason I went with the UTG is because where my rail is here does not line up with the rail on my gas block. So I went with this one because it gives me a little bit more elevation so if I have to go to my backup sites or not even so much that when I have to when I use those then that front sight is because it's higher it's lined up with my rear aperture for my iron sights uh, sticking with the sights I have the lucid HD on here I believe this is the lucid HD 7 um, I got this off of opticsplanet.com. Um, I'll leave a link for that down below. I'll also leave a link for the other stuff, the Magpul and the UTG. Uh, but I put this on here. I actually reached out to uh, one of the guys who worked at the sheriff's office with me at the time. And he told me about the Lucid HD. And he told me it was a very good site at a very good affordable price. So I looked it up placed an order and I'm happy to say that I'm very pleased with this site uh, when I got it I put it on this rifle uh, I took it outside and I just did a bore sight using a laser bore sighter to set this and I think I set it at about a uh, hundred yards maybe and one of the first times that I got to take it out to the uh, gun range to shoot and qualify to carry this rifle with me um, I shot a 200 out of 200. So ever since then, I have not touched the sight at all. It has not been moved off of this gun. So, yep, I'm very pleased with this. Uh, it does have the grooves in here, so you can buy a magnifier piece to go on the back to screw in there. And I have what they call the honeycomb. I don't know if you can see that. But basically, it honeycombs. So, if I happen to be out somewhere 
and the light hits my lens here, it won't reflect and give away my position because of the glare from my from my lens on there. But it doesn't obstruct my view at all, so that's uh, a bonus. Uh, like I said, the ATG flip-up sight here on the front. Uh, right here is my nightstick flashlight, and right now I have that set with the presser switch. So it does have a button here that I can push for continuous, or I just use the pressure switch for momentary use. Uh, yeah, I went with that light for one because it is a very, very bright light. So, very bright, but then it's also uh, very affordable. I picked this up at uh, a local law enforcement store uh, right here in Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, it's been bought out by Gauls.com, but for those of you in the central area, I am um, talking about Cruise Uniform. It's the name that it used to be under, but now it has been bought out by Gauls.com. I'll leave that link down there in the description box as well. Uh, on the front here, I decided to go with the Magpul furniture. Uh, it's made out of a, a plastic or more of a polymer, so it's, it's lighter than your regular uh, quad rails. I haven't tried all the other rail systems that are out there. They might have some of the metal ones that are light as well. But I went with this one because the Magpul was more in my budget. And like I said, with it being lighter, then it lightened up the gun a little bit. Uh, I have the M-Lock rails on both sides. Uh, on this side here, I am planning on putting a laser, which uh, that will come later on. Uh, the light mount is the Magpul offset, and the reason I went with that was because this flashlight also comes with the uh, on and off cap right here. So if I have the gun up, scoot up so y'all can see what I'm talking about. If I have the gun up here, my thumb will be right there on that button. I'm going to turn this way a little bit. My thumb would be right here on the button, so I would still be able to manipulate my light if I had that switch on there. But right now I'm running with the momentary switch. So whenever I have the gun up, whenever I have the gun up, slight squeeze, and I can turn that light on, loosen up the grip. I still have control of the gun, but I just don't have the light on that will end up giving away my position. Uh, on the bottom, went with the Magpul I believe that's the MOE uh, foregrip. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the angled foregrip. I have, you know, held a gun that had that, and it is good. And it just, I guess that's just one of those things where it's a, it's a personal preference. For me, I like this one because if and when I get my laser put on the side, I'm going to have to use my thumb to manipulate that. And so... I can grip this also just to let you know there's nobody here in this direction as well as nobody is in that direction so just a disclaimer anytime I'm pulling the gun up I'm not aiming the gun at anybody here in the room with me but as I was saying when I get my laser on there I can still hold my gun here and be able to move my thumb around while maintaining control of the rifle. Uh, maintaining control is very key when shooting any gun. You always have to have control of that weapon because once you pull that trigger and you send that round down range, uh, you can't go take it back. So if you hit something that you are not intending to hit, that's on you. But uh, working my way back some more, uh, right here on the side, I have the Magpul Bad Lever. And BAD just stands for Battery Assist Device. Uh, basically, when your bolt is locked to the rear, whether you're putting in a fresh mag or you are doing a reload, I will demonstrate. Okay. Magazine. Okay. You can still insert the magazine and push the button here to charge it 
send that round forward. Now, where the bad lever comes into play is when you have fired your rifle and your last round, you know, you fired your last round and you're empty. Whenever you drop that mag out, mag, magazine, whenever you drop that mag out, you put a new one in, your finger is already in this position here because safety is key. And uh, some of y'all might know what I'm talking about when I say this. If you don't, go find Black Hawk Down and you'll understand it. But the part where they were on the base and the, uh, I believe he was a lieutenant, no, it was captain, was fussing at one of the Delta guys about his weapon not being on safe, and he told him, this is my safety. So that finger is here in the safe position. You put in that fresh magazine, instead of taking your left hand and hitting the button on the side, I can keep my hand here while raising my gun up to get back on target. I can take my finger and hit that lever and now I have sent the bolt forward, charging my weapon and putting a round in there. And now I'm ready to get back in the fight and keep going. Uh, if you're new to shooting AR-15s, I would suggest, and actually, let me take that back. Anybody who is new to shooting guns at all, Firearms, crossbows, anything. Anybody who is new to it, learn the basics before you try to put on any kind of accessories to jazz up your weapons, I guess. Uh, a great video to watch on YouTube, uh, Tactical Rifleman. Uh, it's a group of guys. They're all ex-military, Special Forces, Navy SEALs. You know, the list goes on and on. They have a lot of good content out there. A lot of good videos on beginning on your shooting and uh, your tactical setups. But I know from my experience and what I've learned, learn the basics before you start adding accessories. Uh, for you tactical guys, uh, I was talking to my brother about this earlier. There is a difference in tactical and tactical. Tactical you want to look cool. So you've got all the cool stuff. You've got the bipod on the front. And you you look great. But is it tactical? C-A-L. Which for me is also, you know, calculating. If, it's, if you've added a lot of stuff to your rifle, stuff that you don't need, you're just trying to look cool. But it's looking cool, going to save your life if it comes down to that. So you need to be calculating instead of cool. So with that being said, again, learn the basics. Do not go and get the battery assist device before you learn the basics of reloading this gun. This is just to help me, not really so much help me, this is just that extra, you know, one or two seconds faster on the reload. Uh, as we say in the gun world, and this can apply to anything else in life, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. If I drop that mag out, I put another mag in, I hit that with my left hand, I'm still moving smooth and fluid, I'm going through all the motions, and I'm getting back down range. Once I get the hang of that, then I can start adding this stuff, so whenever I have to do my reload, now I can use the battery assist device to give me that, you know, one or two tenths of a second to be a little bit faster. But learn the basics first. Because a lot of people, you know, you see the guys on the military movies and they slap it. But if you cup your hand and you hit that, you might hit the gun, but you might not hit the button. And you're still not going to make your reload. So learn the basics. Make sure you... Get all the little things, you know, that's one of the things they used to tell us in the military and boot camp. The little details. Pay attention to the little details because those are the ones that add up. Little detail here, a little detail here 
might add up to a big problem. So pay attention to the details. Now, continuing going back with the battery assist, uh, this is a BCM uh, charging handle. Uh, I guess one of the only reasons I went with this charging handle is because it has the extended right there. So that way, you know, I can grip it here to charge it. I can still do the traditional style like this, but for me, I like putting my mag in there and then being able to reach up here and charge it that way. Uh, coming back here, I have the Magpul. Uh, this is the Magpul STR buttstock. Uh, the only difference with this stock is right here on the cheek weld. These are actually battery compartments. So I have extra batteries for my uh, my my red dot sights. I have batteries for my flashlight up here, and I even carry batteries for my pistol light. And then, of course, this is just a regular old, uh, I don't even know if it really had a name brand to it, but it's uh, the sling adapter for single point slings. And the sling that I'm wearing on me is a Condor single point. I went with this one because I can still have my sling on me and detach my gun from me. So if I don't need my gun for that moment, I can have my sling on me but detach the gun. And then whenever I do need the gun, I snap it. I'm ready to go. So that there is my AR-15 setup. Nothing real special, no fancy colors because again, I'm trying to be practical, I'm being tactical. This weapon is gonna be used for law enforcement, uh, SWAT team stuff. I don't need a whole bunch of OD green and desert tan and I'm working on the streets. Most of the times we're working at nighttime, stuff like that when we execute these raids. So why do I want a gun that, you know, kind of sticks out in the darkness? I want a gun that's going to blend in a little bit with the nighttime, which is going to help conceal me a little bit more. So keep that in mind when you guys are out buying guns and, you know, you're adding accessories and stuff like that. If it has a purpose, then by all means, get it, learn how to use it, learn how to use it effectively. But if you're just trying to look tactical, C-O-O-L, you're just wasting your money and you're, you know, it's just for show. You know, I was watching one of the tactical riflemen and as Carl, the guy on there says, you know, it, it's good for the pew pew guys, but it's not practical when it comes to your life. So keep that in mind. Uh, again, if you guys like these videos, hit that like button, share these videos, hit the subscribe button, make sure you click on the bell so that way you get notified every time I put out one of these videos. And I guess until next time, be safe out there, be safe on the range, and see you guys later.